Angela Cherby, Fred Film Radio from the Torino Film Festival here with Mr. Malcolm McDowell. Good morning. Good morning. You are here because you're receiving an award, a career award, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a tribute to you of your gigantic career that started globally with uh, one of the most famous movies of the era of cinema, which was A Clockwork Orange. Yes. And you know that. And uh, did you ever think back then that this film would have been so gigantic and so iconic and timeless? Because it is a timeless film, actually. Well, I knew the film was good, mm. but I didn't know how good. Um, and I know I felt the work I knew was good, and uh, we felt good about it. And, you know, if you're doing your job and the director's a brilliant man, yeah. then you know it's going to be a good movie. But I didn't know we'd still be talking about it 52 years later. Exactly. And it was very controversial back at the time because your role was a kind of a scary and disturbing one. Yes, I, uh, you know, I, I could never really see that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the way I played it was a, as a black comedy. Very black, but still comedic. And it's in a style. It's not naturalism. Yeah. There's a style to it, so, you know, you get away with an awful lot, you know, when you're doing a rape and uh, to sing it in the rain. It's mm -hmm. um, this juxtaposition of, you know, happiness with this awful deed. Yeah. And, um, but I didn't know that it was going to be so talked about. But, you know, it's interesting that through the years, uh, what people really understand about the film and really like about the film has changed. You know, at the beginning, it was the shock and awe because the look of the film was so unique. Absolutely. Yeah. And, as, of course, has been so copied. Mm -hmm. Now, I've just been looking at a Gucci... Um, <laughs> yeah, advertising, yeah. I mean, uh, this is 2022. I mean, this is now 52 years. Well, this is what iconic means, you know. Yeah. That image was printed in our minds forever. And it's amazing how that image happened by luck. Oh, really? Well, yes, because you know, before we started shooting, uh, I was out at Stanley's house maybe three or four times a week. You know, he lived uh, an hour out of London, and I'd go. We'd he'd send a, out for um, Chinese uh, takeaway, which was terrible, by the way. <clears throat> you still remember that? In Boreham Wood, yes. I mean, <laughs> a, a dormitory town in of London. You know, you're not going to get good food. Um, and even in London in those days, you'd be <laughs> hard-pressed. But um, he was walking me back to my car in his driveway, and he said, uh, what do you think you'll wear? And I went, I don't know. It, you know, it's futuristic a little bit. And he goes, what have you got? And I went, what have I got? I don't know. I've got jeans and a t-shirt and my cricket gear in the car he goes put it on what's this and i said well that's a protector he goes wear it on the outside so the whites yeah with the cod piece that's my cricket gear and then i found at bieber boutique store a yard that's a meter mm -hmm. of eyelash Mm -hmm. in one strip, and I thought this was hilarious, and I bought it as a gimmick present for Stanley, yeah. and he looked at it, and he goes, put it on. And, and this is how this iconic Im Im yeah. image was created. And I chose a bowler hat because I just wanted to um, give the middle finger to the city of London, mm -hmm. where they all wore bowler hats. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, the, you... Uh, you also play the, in another kind of uh, iconic movies of that era that was If by Lynn Sands. If came first. Came first, exactly. And uh, you were driven to characters that were kind of on the verge of uh, society in terms of acceptance, you know, because also the, the one that you play there is not exactly an easy task. Well, uh, you know, you say that I was driven to them. Actually, it's the other way around. <laughs> 
They were driven to me. Because I was a young actor, I would have taken anything. <laughs> but when Lindsay Anderson cast me as the rebel in If, mm -hmm. which is an iconic film. Yeah, that definitely. In every way as good as Clockwork Orange, but not quite so accessible. But mm -hmm. it's a great movie. Kubrick saw the movie and cast me immediately without... Before he met me, he cast me. Mm. And so that started this um, cycle of movies of, you know, rebellion, I guess. Yeah. Of that, but that's what was happening at the time. You know, there were riots in the streets, anti-Vietnam uh, demonstrations and um, gay rights. It was the time of the demonstrations. And, and I went on many. I think I did one for Indonesia. I, I, I can't even remember how many, but um, I remember them doing one for the Panoffs, these dancers that were in, they were wanted to immigrate, emigrate from the Soviet Union to uh, Israel, and they were not allowed. And uh, so we went on a march about mm -hmm. that. So it was a very intense and political era. It was very political, and um, you know, you used uh, your position, you know, of notoriety such that it <laughs> was, to um, support um, freedoms, basically. I have one last question about another controversial movie uh, that you were in, which was an Italian film called Caligula. Yes. That was a very difficult and outrageous and very difficult to see to be seen actually movie now. It's difficult? Yeah, because yeah. it was it was it was you know it was it was censored tons of times and then it, w it was re it was pulled off by the uh, now now it's accessible on DVD actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have an, any kind of, of of memory about of how was the set on that film because I think it was so weird. Was the set weird as well? well this, this you know film sets are pretty much the same. <laughs> Um, there was quite a bit of nudity, I guess, but um, you know, it it was a an, uh, the sets were extraordinary, by the way, uh, by Danilo Donati, who was mm -hmm. a genius himself. Was it, yeah, I mean, absolutely, yeah, costume right. sets. I mean, the man was a visionary. You know, I mean, he'd done all those wonderful Fellini movies, um, and you know. Uh, we had a very um, interesting director in Tinto Brass, who was, uh, you know, uh, an extraordinary man in many ways. And um, I liked him very much. And um, his vision, I thought, uh, I loved his vision of having Caligula, you know, be the original anarchist and destroy the empire from the very top. I thought that was a very interesting take on it. And rather than play him as a madman, you know, yeah. uh, just psycho psychotic, I, it's not much fun to do that. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's more interesting to play him, you know, as, as, as trying to, you know, uh, provoke all the institutions yeah. of Rome. Well, I would I would talk to you for hours, but we don't have time. So I have to say goodbye. Thanks a lot, Mr. Thank Mark McDonald, for having been with us, and Angela Cherby for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thank you. <laughs>